What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Gateway Murder back with another one. Today, I have a topic of three things that I wish somebody had told me when I first started riding, when I first started thinking about riding. Yeah, so let's go ahead and roll that intro and then we'll get into it. Guys, so let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing, man, the first thing is a big thing for me that I wish I had known about when I first started riding. And let me let me clarify by saying I knew about it. I just didn't honestly believe that it was that important of a thing. And here's why. My whole family has been riding pretty much my whole life. I've been around motorcycles my whole life. The thing of it is, is the first thing is the MSF course. For those of you that don't know what it is, because you're new to riding, you're looking at riding videos, trying to figure out whether or not it's something you want to get into or not. The MSF course is the Motorcycle Safety Foundation course. I do believe that you can get on MSF website and look up your local areas where they have courses at. Uh, I will check into that, and if that is so, I will put the link down in the description for their courses or for their website. All you have to do is go down below and click on that link. I really wish I had looked into that a whole lot earlier. I didn't. I had been running. I've been riding for 12 years, give or take a year or two. So I've been riding for quite some time, and the thing of it is, is even though I've been riding for quite some time, I never looked into doing the MSF course. I knew, I knew it was something that eventually I probably would do to go ahead and just get my full-fledged license. But the thing is, is I've been riding on my permit for all those years. And in the San Jose, with a permit, the only two things you cannot do technically are ride at night and ride with a passenger. Once you're above the age of 18, everything else is out the window. I can go anywhere with a permit, except for ride at night and ride with a passenger. Now, that being said, I know people who were riding on a permit as if it was a full-fledged license. They really didn't think that of it because they were told that they could by a, an officer. Yeah, so I know people, like I said, who rode on permits for many years because they had believed that it was legal to do so and they were able to do everything they, they could do with the license on a permit, which was not the case. Uh, when I, I started talking to them and everything, I, uh, I went back and I looked it up and right there, on uh, Missouri's website, it says like you, a permit is a permit, a license is a license. There are differences to both of them. Yeah, that place is, fun, is amazing. He went up to the DMV and got his license that way, which if you're comfortable doing that on whatever bike you have, by all means, go for it. I, at this point in time, feel like I could do it on this bike, but it is definitely much easier and not only is it much easier, it's, you definitely, I learned a few things in the MSF course that, you know, I knew that they definitely helped me hone the skills, right? So, that being said, I, I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend doing your MSF, taking your MSF. Not only that, there's advantages to it, right? So they give you a card at the end of it when you, because you, you go through the course, for me it was a two day course, eight hours a day, right? We're out in the car, uh, out, in the, out in the yard riding these little 250s that they provide. They provide everything but the helmets and your, you know, obviously the clothes that you have to wear. We're out in the course and we're riding basically for eight hours. We're out there doing these courses for eight hours. I had a good time, man. I'm not a people person, like, I'm terrible at meeting new people, I really am. But everybody in my class was awesome. And everybody passed their course. And there was a couple of them I wasn't sure that was gonna pass, but they passed and I'm, I'm happy for them, it was great. Um, you know, that just shows you 
that uh, MSF definitely does teach you something. Because, like I said, I didn't believe that they were going to pass, and they did. So, that's a good thing. MSF is a must. Like, I recommend that to anybody who is new at riding. For, you know, they, they teach you how to ride. They teach you how to use the clutch, how to use the throttle, how to use your brakes, your shifter, everything. They teach you all that. It's, it's more so geared at the people who have never ridden before. Like I said, there's advantages to it as well, which the advantages are you get that card and you can take that card to your insurance company and you'll end up getting cheaper insurance because you took the the course. MSF is a must. The second thing that I recommend, the second thing I wish I had known when I uh, was first getting into riding and first trying to learn how to ride is, man, don't let anybody tell you that the bike that you're riding is too small for you. If you are comfortable on that bike, if you're comfortable on that bike, that is the bike that you need to be on. You definitely want to be on a bike that you're 100% you're comfortable that you can control. I've got an uncle, like I said, my family's been riding for my whole life. I've got an uncle that every bike I rode up until this particular bike, he kept telling me that I needed a bigger bike. I needed a bigger bike. And while I didn't necessarily disagree with him, I didn't agree with him either, right? I started on a 750, like an 80s Honda 750, right? That's what I started on. I mean, there's no shame in starting on a smaller bike. And, and I, you know, I get it. A 750 doesn't sound like a small bike, but in comparison, this bike, as far as CCs go, is like 1811. The conversion it brings it to like a, a like 1811 CC bike. I had that 750, I was riding that 750, and he, he's like, oh, you need a bigger bike, you need a bigger bike, you need a bigger bike. And I tried to explain to him, like, hey, man, I get it. It works weird, you know, I'm a big guy on this little bike. I understand that, but you got to understand, I don't care what everybody thinks of me, first of all. I really don't. I want to make sure that I'm comfortable controlling the bike before, wow, I'm really glad I'm not going the other way. Hopefully, everybody who rode not like this the whole, or on my side. But I was like, I'm going to make sure I'm comfortable on the bike before I, I get to a bigger bike that I don't feel comfortable. Because the thing of it is, if you start on too big of a bike, you're going to be uncomfortable, and chances are you're not going to want to ride it very often. And there's thousands of videos out here uh, outlining these things that I'm, I'm talking about. Yeah, you're not going to feel comfortable on a uh, bigger bike if you're not, you know what I'm saying? If you're not used to riding. If you go out, get your permit, and the first bike you get is a Suzuki 1500 Intruder, you're not going to be, yo, what the fuck, seriously? Anyway, I don't know where I was at, but I get really, really pissed off when people do that. Get a bike that you're comfortable with. That's where I was going with that. If you're comfortable with a 250, get a 250. If you're comfortable with a 500, get a 500. Don't let anybody talk you into buying a bike that you are absolutely not ready for. It. And that leads me into my third thing. Number three. The third thing that I wish I was more aware of when I first started riding motorcycles. So that same uncle that kept telling me I need a bigger bike, need a bigger bike, need a bigger bike. He, uh, I didn't really go on a ride with him. I've never really been out riding with him. I did, however, take a really short ride, literally, to go around the street to a, to a parking lot so he can teach my cousin how to be a passenger on a motorcycle when she was younger. Wow, they're building, holy cow, that's new. I was on my Suzuki 1500 Intruder when we went on that short little ride. It was probably like a mile, mile and a half over to the parking lot and all that good stuff. Well, he uh, he made mention like, hey, you need a, like you, you were pretty decent, but you need to make, like you need to ride with people that know how to ride that uh, to get your experience up. I don't know that I absolutely agree with that. I agree with it a little bit, 
But to say 100% agree with what he said, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with it. And the reason why is because, yeah, while it helps to ride with people who are experienced, who know how to ride, you might get with a group of people who aren't experienced and know how to ride, but aren't necessarily experienced enough to know that you're not able to ride at their skill level, meaning, they might be on the like roads like I'm on right now. Like you see, there's a lot of sharp turns in that road, and they might be taking them way faster than you're capable of taking them at your skill level, right? And that's not good. You don't want that because you're going to be trying to keep up with them because you don't want them to lose you or leave you behind. So you're way out of your comfort zone and doing things that you're not capable of doing with your skill level and that creates a dangerous problem right so my recommendations are if you are going to ride with a group of people which i don't recommend when you're a new rider i recommend learning how to ride learning how to control the bike and building up your skill set before you start taking on group rides okay and everything else if you are going to ride with people, make sure that you're riding with people that understand that your skills may not match theirs and that really, in all honesty, you need to be at the front of the pack because you should be leading the, the pack with your skill set. Because if you're taking a corner at 45 at the front of the pack, it means everybody else behind you is taking a corner at 45 as well. Right? They're not taking that at 60 or 70 or whatever the, the heck they might be taking it at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so definitely if you choose to ride with people and you're new to riding, which there's nothing wrong with it, just make sure you're riding with a group of people that understand. Man, that was a good looking SUV. Make sure you're riding with a group of people that understand that your skill set does not match theirs. Right? And. They're not putting you out of your comfort zone to uh, to keep up with the pack that you're riding with. Like, definitely, 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 definitely recommend that. Because I'll tell you right now, I went on a couple rides when I was a newer rider with a few different people. While I never exactly had that exact problem, the reason why I never had that problem is because I picked and choose who I was riding with. I wouldn't ride with nobody I, was, I, I didn't feel comfortable riding with. I've got a buddy of mine. He's like, oh man, we got like this. I used to be in a club. This is how we rode in the club. Yada, yada, yada. This is how I like to ride now. And I'm like, all right, cool. And he's been trying to get me to ride with him. And I I haven't rode with him. And it's not because I, like, I haven't made it out. Like, the reason why I haven't rode with him lately is because I haven't made it out there. But when I first bought this bike, I wanted to get comfortable on this bike before I went to go ride with him the way he was talking, right? Because when I first bought this bike, I don't know that I'd been able to keep up with him that way. I, I can now, but at the time, I wouldn't have been able to. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you right there. I'm about to go pick up the Pocky One Chip Challenge. I'm going to go home, hang out with a couple buddies. I have to leave out tomorrow morning and head out to Sac or wow, head out to Stockton, California, and everything. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you right there. Y'all have a good day. Get rid of Moto. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a comment down below. There's something like that. If, you, if, if you've been riding for a little while, Leave me a comment down below of uh, something you wish you were down whenever you first started riding. Let's uh, let's see if we can get some more, more tips and, and things like that for newer riders. Again, if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Y'all have a good day. All right. Bye.